This patient has DeGeorge syndrome. So she's a young girl of four years of age. Um, and I believe DeGeorge syndrome is associated with craniofacial uh, anomalies. Now, we're fortunate enough to have been able to get ear specific information from her. And uh, we've got four frequencies in each ear. The left ear is looking relatively normal, mild loss at four kilohertz. Uh, but in the l- right hand side, we've got a much more significant um, loss on the, in the low and mid frequencies. Uh, we don't have any co- bone conduction and uh, I don't believe this has been masked. So we do have a couple of questions around um, the true thresholds, maybe on the right hand side that... Uh, that would need a bit further investigation. So I think we just need to bear those in mind as we go through our case today. But let's have a look at the 3D graph. Um, Lillian, we've got a huge asymmetry here, haven't we? Uh, Yes, uh, we do uh, indeed. And uh, it's also worth uh, mentioning that just on the base that we we do not have any uh, bone conduction results that um, just by the use of the uh, tympanometry and the white band here, we have the information uh, whether there is something we should pay attention to in the middle ear or not. Um, so just by looking at the 3D graphs here for that measure, yes, there is uh, something we need to pay attention to uh, that could be a conductive component of uh, some kind. Now we just have to figure out what it may be. Our resonance frequencies are quite different as well. So we've got quite a low resonance frequency on the left ear. Um, also, to me, that 3D graph looks a bit noisy. Would you agree with that? At the left side, yes, I would agree that it seems to be some degree of noise. Uh, that's something we should pay attention to as the measure builds up. Of the 3D graph, we can see how much noise is uh, present in the measure. Uh, and how much of that is averaged out during the measure. But it still seems after the average here that it is a bit uh, rough and spiky in the way it looks, which is a quality indicator to us of uh, the measure. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have a look at our tympanograms page. So the left side, again, we've got noise, haven't we? Um, would you be happy interpreting this or would you want to repeat this measurement? Uh, this one uh, in itself, it was the 226 that I've uh, been given. I would uh, indeed repeat it and the same for the average uh, measure in this regards. Okay. And what's this sort of reversal at the beginning of the frequency, uh, beginning of the pressure, pressure range? On each of these, we've got this sort of flat line that goes to the right hand side and then the sweep goes back to the left. What's, what's that telling you? Uh, it's in the buildup of the pressure and it's also in the process where we establish the baseline, so the ear canal volume prior to to starting the measure. So, you know, you, we pump up until we have the, the maximum positive uh, pressure that we want to uh, achieve and then we start uh, doing the measure. And it's in there that we can see that uh, something has moved uh, so that relative to the baseline we have established um there is some some kind of of noise interfering with the measure, so it's it's a measure that is strongly recommended to to redo. Okay, I imagine if that, possible. Yeah, I imagine it wasn't redone because I suspect that there were probably issues with uh, patient cooperation in this little one. She's probably quite exhausted having done all of that um, pure tone audiometry earlier on. So let's have a look at the right hand side. Now here, uh, there's not the noise is there that we had in the left hand side. Um, things are looking pretty flat, but I mean, maybe, maybe that 226, there is a bit of a bump. It's not a flat, flat line on the 226. Uh, yeah, there is a little bit of a bump, but that's also where just looking at the 226, I would be a little bit cautious in, in interpreting anything just based on that one. Uh, is it flat? Is it uh, is it a slight uh, peak or amount of energy being absorbed in there? Or what is it that we're looking at? Uh, where support of the white band average indicates that it, it looks more flat when we average it out. And that's definitely where the absorbance can support us in what uh, are the findings and the condition of the middle ear here. Interesting. So I think a lot of people might look at that 226 and say, oh, well, it's not completely flat and, and be feeling as though there were some degree of eardrum movement, which is, is not necessarily the case. And our, our additional information with the wideband average tympanogram and the absorbance graph, that really provides us with, with more information and more data to, to make our interpretation, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Let's have a look at the absorbance graphs. Okay. So again, we've got a bit of a difference here. 
Um, and because our peak pressure on the right was 175, we've got our absorbance graph in the gray at ambient pressure. Um, what, what would you, where do you want to start with this one? What, what are you looking at first? So again, it's an asymmetry that we'll look at for the two years, but we also have a, an indication that a quite bit of, big amount of energy is, uh, is not being absorbed on the right side. Um, for both years here, it goes for the higher frequencies that there is a reduction in the amount of energy. Um, if we look at the, the peak pressure curve relative to the, uh, the ambient pressure on the right side, we can see a great difference in those two here. Um, and that's an indication that there, there are potentially some, some uh, movement uh, in the air and some amount of energy being absorbed. So, so there, is, there is a bit of air in there, but, but still we see a, a quite heavy reduction um, in the amount of energy uh, being absorbed, uh, which potentially indicates some uh, degree of mass component in, in there. Okay, so I'm just thinking the the two two six and the wide band average tympanogram were, were indicating a relatively flat uh, tympanogram on the right side, and we had quite a significant loss on that side. Would you would you think this is just fluid, just middle ear effusion, or would you think there may be something else involved here? We can see that there is still some amount of energy is being absorbed. So that's what I would take for also having a support of the, the absorbance graph relative to just looking at the 226 or the wideband average. And then in particular for the, the left side uh, in it also, I pay close attention to the amount of noise we had in the measure when we did it. So I wouldn't trust it too much uh, in that regards. So I'm thinking if there's some air behind that right ear, it could be a mass-dominated pathology that is not our typical middle ear effusion. Uh, it could be something else, couldn't it, that is is still allowing some, some air to be present? Yes, that could be the case. Interesting. Okay. So yeah, the left-hand side, uh, I think uh, you really made that an interesting point there that we need to remain a bit skeptical about these results because they were quite noisy. And that's something that then could persist into the absorbance graph, isn't it? Yes. So so overall, we have the absorbance where we need the support of the uh, the middle ear conditions that we did not get from our, from our audiometry in this matter. So we purely have to base it up on what we get from our um tympanometry uh, and the 3D graph here. And that supports us in that something is going on in the middle ear on both sides. Uh, so it is likely a conductive component that's present, uh, supported by that it's it's likely a, a mass uh, component based on what we see here also uh, on the uh, absorbance curve. Fantastic. It'd be very interesting to see where things then progressed with this case, you know, whether there was a, a progression of the condition or whether things resolved and, and also to, to get that bone conduction testing done in the future. That would be super helpful, wouldn't it? It, it would indeed. And it's definitely one that we would, would like to see again to, to follow up upon what the, the condition is and in what way we need to, to treat this patient, uh, either with a, with a hearing aid or, or an operation on what is needed. Um, so it, it's one that we continuously need to monitor um, to see what's going on. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lillian. Thank you.